Hello everyone, today we are talking about three random Edinburgh buildings you might not know were listed. So how are you all? Hope you are all happy and healthy and safe out there. Yes, I am outside as you will notice. Um, I'm not breaking the rules, just before anyone says. I am outside for two reasons. One, for my exercise. And two, I had some uh, essential shopping to do in the area. So I thought I would take advantage of those two things. And whilst I'm out, do this as well. So I've deliberately researched information about the area I would be in so that I'm not going out with that, um, if that makes sense. So, yeah, so today we are talking about things in Edinburgh that you might not know were listed. Now, this is a bit silly, I know, because Edinburgh is known as the Athens of the North, and so many things are listed. Like, it is ridiculous how many things are listed in Edinburgh. For example, the wall right behind me. We've already talked about this. This is part of the Flodden Wall. If you haven't seen the video where I trace the roots of the old Flodden Wall that used to go round Edinburgh and block it in essentially, I'll leave a link in the corner and in the description. So Edinburgh is full of listed buildings and for the most part you could probably guess them. But there's lots of things that you might not think are listed. Like this here is an old police box decorated and I'm in the Pleasance right now I'm in the area of the Pleasance there's the Pleasance courtyard right there which is usually uh, right <laughs> right there which is usually a hive of activity during the Edinburgh festival but I don't think it's that one because there are two immediately beside each other there's one literally just down here so I think it's the one down the bottom here actually it might be all of them but the old Edinburgh police boxes are listed. The reason I'm going to go with the one down the bottom is because I think it's the only one in the sort of central Edinburgh which hasn't been turned into a, a coffee stop or a, a little bistro or a little cake stand or something like that. It's still essentially as is. So unless you don't know what the PO box, the, the, the PO box is, the post office the police box is. You can see why I got confused. Police boxes all around Edinburgh and probably the whole of Britain were built in the 1900s and they were essentially little police stations. They are not all Doctor Who's TARDIS, much to my disappointment. Now the reason that police boxes existed is because in the 1900s there was no mobile phones, there was no radios, anything like that. So, there is police boxes, so that if the police were out and about and made an arrest, it was a short-term jail cell. They were, they were essentially little police stations, really. There was a telephone in there by the time telephones were invented. I think the, by that point in the 1900s there must have been, where they could contact a main station to say we have someone arrested. Um, so they had multiple uses, and they are dotted all over the place. You, you, you really can see them everywhere around Edinburgh. And like I said, most of them have been turned into other things. But this one here is as is. For, uh, and it's not looking great, to be completely honest. But it is listed, as probably they all are. But it is a listed building, category B. And this is it. Not looking great, I'll give you that. I'll give you that, it does not look the best state for a listed building. There is another one I know, the end of Princess Street, which is definitely also listed. But yeah, this is an old police box. Now, I will say as well, when you see them in Doctor Who, they're square, they're perfectly square. Most of them in Edinburgh are this, and the only square one I know of is actually in Glasgow. But yeah, this is, this is, this is it, and as you can see, it's broken, so we can look inside it as well. Which is a sink, a table, and that's essentially it. Oh, there is a heater. There is a heater as well, so you know you can have a, a little bit of heat. But yeah, that looks like a light switch, a light bulb there. So it's a basic, um, basic thing. So it doesn't like it's been given amenities, so it can be used. But yeah, there we go, the first thing on our listed list of unusual listed things. 
There's a title for the video. We won't call it that. Underneath, ironically, the sign for the Flodden Wall, which is also very, very listed. So, yeah, the two listed things together. One of them looks grand and one of them looks completely forgotten of. And truthfully, I mean, they were all sold off. All the old listed, uh, all the old police boxes that were sold off. Um, and like I said, used for various things around about town now, mostly of where you can pick up a coffee. I think one of them on the Royal Mail is now you can buy tickets for various tourist attractions. That is number one on our things you wouldn't think are listed in Edinburgh. I'll cut by the time you see this video, obviously I will have a title, but I will be trying titles as we go through. And there's what I mean nowadays. This is on the Royal Mile. And there is another police box, which is now a little Canongate Cafe, as you can see. So it's nice that all these things have been given a second lease of life, so to speak, but I suppose it'd be nice if one of them, probably that one that I showed you, because there's very few that aren't doing anything, one of them could be kept as is, essentially, and as, as a, well, a piece of history, because that's what it is. And I know they're all still there, I know they're still there, they're not police boxes anymore, because they're not needed to be police boxes anymore, but it is a police box, you know what I mean? At least make one of them a Doctor Who memorial, something like that. It's funny this video, because I knew the route that I needed to go for what I'm doing. So finding a subject that would fit was a lot of fun to sort of say, right, this is where I have to go, what can I find on that way? So I'm walking down the Royal Mile right now, and we're going to head um, the next two are right beside each other. Um, one of them you could probably guess as well, and one of them... Well, you could probably guess these two if you really thought about it. But you don't have to, because that's what, you're, what I'm here for. So, we're heading down right to the bottom of the canning game. Next up, welcome to the new Colton Burial Ground. I say new because there is an old Colton burial ground, but it's not new. <laughs> it's not new. Now, this is um, just behind the very bottom of the Royal Mile, behind the Cannon Gate. So that right there is the Scotch Parliament. There's uh, Salisbury Crags there. There's the top of Arthur's Seat just there. Um, Abbey Hill is just over there. Um, so just to give you a rough bear in there, you can just see, uh, can I see it in the camera? Holyrood Palace, see those spikes there? That's Holyrood Palace right there. And yeah, so we're inside um, the new Colton burial ground. Now if you like things like this, it's definitely one to come to anyway because it's, it's stunning, it's peaceful, it's beautiful as long as you're respectful, obviously. Um, there is some incredible monuments. I mean, look at that. It's just beautiful. Um, so only come here if you're going to pay it respect that it's due, um, as, I'm, as you know I will always do. And I'm sure you're going to think that it's going to be things like this right here. See that? Um, and now, I've spoken about these before because we've seen one at the far end of Princess Street. These are the watchtowers for when there was grave robbers. Um, not Birkin here, because although they are our most famous grave robbers, never robbed a grave in their life. But uh, the body snatchers, essentially the grave robbers, um, the resurrectionists, whatever you want to call them, these towers were erected um, to keep watch over the graveyards to protect the bodies. Uh, sanctity um, and I'm sure you're going to expect me to say that that's listed and it is but you would expect that to be listed and that's not what we're here for what's listed is this whole place the whole graveyard is listed it's um, for its protection uh, I think it's category B as well category B I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong but I think Category B is um, shows historical value to the area and cultural value to the area. I think that's what classes it as Category B. So that's this. 
this stunning, beautiful graveyard. So if you're in the area, please do come in, pay your respects, um, take a look. It's peaceful, it's relaxing, I think. Um, graveyards are, 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 are a very interesting place to come. The stories on graves are incredible um, when you read some of them. And there are people who have made significant, you know, contributions to to everyday culture buried in this graveyard. You probably wouldn't know their names, but there's a, there's a thing at the bottom. I will show you it in a bit. But it's beautiful. Look at it. It's lovely. And this is all listed. And also, while you're here, I mean, you get some incredible views. I mean, look at that. Is that not beautiful? A little bit of snow. Oh, the snow on the top of Arthur's seat there as well. Just before we leave here, um, there is a sign um, at the gate where I can show you some of the people who are buried here. I think I also read that some of Robert Louis Stevenson's family are buried in here. The author, Robert Louis Stevenson, you know, Treasure Island. So, you know, I think some of his family is buried in here. He's not buried in here. Um, but yeah, um, there's a sign at the bottom here, just beside a, a waste paper bin. So forgive the fact that it's... Um, Maybe not the prettiest of looking, but you can see who's buried here and some of the, the contributions that the people in here have given to society. New Colton Burial Ground Graveyard Trail. So there is a trail you can walk around. This is where we are, down the bo bottom here. No, sorry. This is where I am, where it says you are here. So there is a simple trail that it gives you, you can walk around, where you can visit these uh, famous people like this one here, Andrew Fife. Medical drawings provided an alternative source for studying anatomy than corpses stolen by the body snatchers. See, we kind of touched on that already. It's as if I knew what I was talking about. Contributed to this, uh, um, what do you call it, architecture of Scotland and Edinburgh. So you can see, you might not know their name, but they have impacted. And as we leave Colton Burial Ground, and I continue on the route that I have to go on, we have one more stop. Last on our list, this building right here. 55 Abbey Hill. It's quite unique, isn't it? It's one of these buildings that all my life I've kind of seen and never really known, you know, what it was, why it's closed and shut and empty. Um, just to, you know, where we are. If I look to the left, right there, that's the Queen's bathhouse there. We were we did a video there not that long ago. I will leave a link in the corner in the description so you know that as well. Holyrood, but this is the walls of this is the ground of Holyrood Palace right there. That's where we are. And this is 55 Abbey Hill. Now the history is a bit weird. It was a police station. And it's the, look at the architecture on it for a police station. It's almost looks like a castle. It's got gargoyles on it, for goodness sake. I mean, look at that. Let me zoom in there. It's got a gargoyle on it. But yeah, it was a police station. I suppose you could kind of get that from the windows. But it also has a history of being one of Edinburgh's strangest restaurants. Now, I don't remember this. It may have been in my lifetime, but I may have been too young. I, I don't remember it. But the reason... It was known as one of Edinburgh's strangest restaurants. Apparently, it got a bit of a reputation as being ridiculously difficult to get a reservation for. You could only get a reservation if you could track down and get hold of the owner. One reviewer in the record said it took a month of phone calls to get a booking and get in there. But apparently it had some of the most strangest and incredible food. Sadly, now, shut down and in disrepair. Apparently the owner is incredibly elusive as well, which just adds to the mystery, which I love. But look at the door. I love old doors. I love old doors like this. 
Isn't it just brilliant? Isn't it just beautiful? It's a building of mystery. It really, really is. There's another gargoyle just behind me right there. I didn't notice it. Oh, I want to get the angle. Where are we? Are you okay? You down there? Where is it? By the lamppost. There it is. A second gargoyle right there and I can see them on the other side as well. And this is the kind of place that I would love, love, love to go in and just look at. I mean, there's about to be some remnants of when it was a police station. Um, I don't know. Can I go on the grass here and kind of get a look at the back? Is that, you think that's cheeky? I don't think so. That's people's houses there, so I don't want to go that way. Not much space there, I can't really see much there, but yeah. So there you have the most elusive, strange building that's listed that no one really knows much about. Oh, don't you just want to go in it? I so want to go in it. I so want to go in it. So there you have it, guys. Three things you might not realise are listed in Edinburgh. That's, that's a good title. Yeah, well, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, as always, you know, oh, I've got water on the lens. But okay. If you have, as always, you know the drill. Please remember to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, um, leave a comment, let me know. If you know anything about that building, please tell me. Or if you know any other unusual things that are listed in Edinburgh, because I've got a list and we can do more of these things that you might not realise were listed. Um, but if you know more, please let me know. There's, and this is a list of things that can take us to lots of different places in Edinburgh as well, different areas that we can visit out of the centre of town, which is always good. I'm really excited to do that as well. But yeah, um, as I continue on where I need to go, um, keep yourself safe out there as always. But till next time, bye humans.